Can everybody hear me? Yes, that's good. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Alex Buchholt. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Stack Courier. It is nice to be back in person, seeing everybody, but hello to everybody virtually. Uh, I hope you'll be able to join us in person for the next convention. So it's good to see everybody. So five minutes. Next slide, please. Who are we? What is Stack Courier? What do we do? So Stack Courier, we were established in 1999. We are a woman-owned small business based in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, what we primarily do for our library business uh, segment is we pick up, sort, and deliver all of your interlibrary loan requirements. So library media, books, DVDs, CDs, we will take them in, sort them, and then take them back out for all those holes, holes that you have. So where are we? As you can see, we are headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri. We have a large logistical hub in Atlanta, Georgia, but we do service the whole of the United States, with the exceptions of some of these white states here. It's not to say we can't service them. We don't have a current infrastructure there. So if there's anybody from Hawaii here, please come and see me. We would love to help out. Next slide, please. There you go. So who does Stack Courier service? We run the whole gamut between larger institutions and court consortiums to really small regional library groups. Uh, Elizabeth's here from Georgia Pines. Again, we manage their interlibrary loan system. We pick up, sort, and deliver millions of books each year. Likewise with Mobius, it's focused in the Midwest, so Missouri, uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Iowa. Again, millions of books going through all of those regions every year. Similarly, we, we work with Kentucky Virtual Library, Iowa Shares, and then states or count or states such as Jefferson County, Colorado, Pikes Peak Library District, and then your smaller regional libraries that maybe have two or three branches that maybe just have requirement for two or three times a week, a couple of totes two or three times a week. So we run the whole gap, millions of books to a couple of, couple of totes per week. Quick show of hands. Who amongst you has an interlibrary loan system set up? Okay, so it's the majority of you all here. So it's probably not uncommon that you have an employee driver, a van or some kind of vehicle, truck, uh, for your needs. And what can happen is that employee leaves or the van breaks down and we're led to believe that librarians are, are not logistics experts, nor do you want to be logistics experts and manage trucks and, and people. So this is where potentially uh, we can be of help. Uh, it can be as small as a couple of totes and it could be a statewide requirement. So um, I will be here for today and tomorrow, feel free to reach out. Uh, also, feel free to reach out to Mobius, to Georgia Pines. They can, they can uh, share with you what we, what, what we do with them. So on that note, I don't know how I do on timing, but are there any questions? Nothing. Okay, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but thank you all for the attention. <clears throat> And I'll pass you on to Jennifer. You got to beat that time. I'm not. If anybody knows me, I can't come in under time. That's fine. Put this here while I'm going to talk while I'm getting my laptop. Clearly, don't know how to work. Okay, I'm going to just hold this. Um, so while I'm getting this put together, I am Jennifer Weston from Equinox. And one of the things we are very excited about to be talking to all of you today is because we love, love, love open source, of course. And one of the things we love more than anything is talking about Evergreen. But now we have the distinct pleasure of talking about Evergreen and open source discovery layers. Woohoo, exactly. 
we are having a blast getting to know Evergreen all over again when we start talking about adding discovery layers to them. Pardon me while this comes on because it's after lunch and tired too. Get my slides back up. I can talk through without the slides. But one of the things that we have been looking at is a couple of different open source discovery layers and how they can work with Evergreen to see, you know, first of all, you know, what you're essentially doing is saying, hey, look, we can do all these extra really great fun things that make discovery a more pleasurable, more enjoyable, and more accidental discovery service sometimes for our patrons. Very much so our OPAC is what you call intentional searching. And what we want to do is to have this much more user-friendly, can't type my password and think it's, hold on a second. Do, 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 password, please. Okay, now I'm in, ignore all of that. I'll get that up. So as I'm bringing my slides up, my purpose for my next three and a half minutes is to talk about the two open source discovery layers that we are working with and encourage you to come talk to us a little more at our booth. During the vendor showcase today, we will be doing um, a little demo of both Aspen and Viewfind. As soon as I get my, anybody see lightning talks? There it is. You get to see the way I uh, organize. That's terrible, terrifying. I'm doing this. Hold on. I'm getting there. Talk amongst yourselves. Think open source discovery layer while I do this. And why do I keep switching? Okay, one hand. Hold on. There it is. I can see it. Everybody can see it. There we go. Now, my two minutes are left. <laughs> I said that. I said that. Celebrating open source. Yay. I said that. Okay, so. Discovery, as I started to say, what we're looking at again is more of a user-friendly search. It does more than that when you add a discovery layer to Evergreen. You're also adding fast, fast, fast searching, and you're searching multiple sources. So you're no longer just searching multiple, just searching Evergreen. That's the whole purpose of a discovery layer is to bring it all together to make discovery just that. You're discovering all of your resources, not just what's in Evergreen. So we're looking at a couple of different products that we're supporting to make that a reality. So you get your consolidated results completely well. Very, very much customizable with both of these products and more user-friendly. So we're working with both Aspen Discovery and Viewfind. Aspen essentially would replace your native catalog, of course. So what this is doing for you is it gives you all of these fabulous opportunities to customize it, but doing it from within admin features. So you're not relying on server-side kind of setup anymore. These are the things that you can do with admin logins that staff can have to do this yourself. So you can customize your colors, customize what features you want, and then you get your integrations that are just embedded there, and they're already there for you know, all your e-contents, your Hoopla, your OverDrive, your databases, your archives, all kinds of great enrichment things. Support single sign-in, of course, it kind of has to do that, doesn't it? But I'm really, really excited about these new ways you can get your collection and, and, and just promote your collection in ways that you just can't do in a standard search. I've got a couple of screenshots. We invite you to stop by our booth and see more about this with live demos that we're going to do this afternoon, or at least some more screenshots there. Essentially, you've got browse categories you can customize. It's no longer just a carousel. You can spotlight things. You can do advanced searching. Viewfind is similar. It's a different product. Viewfind has the added benefit of its real-time status information, so there's no lag between if you change something in Evergreen, you change the password, you change the status on an item, it's there for Viewfind, so real-time status information, and of course, just like any discovery layer you would expect, it supports those integrations, so to support multiple functions, multiple sources, also non-mark content, harvestable, that kind of thing, also a very flexible interface design. And here's kind of what that looks like. You see the browse by call number, browse by language, browse by format, find more. Again, our booth will have these real time. You can play with them there, but you can see each of these is just a drop down. Very, very intuitive. You don't have to do advanced searching. You just, you want call number, search by call number. It's there. And all of these are already designed for you. Completely flexible. Decide what you want there. So learn more details. So these are the two products we're very excited about each in their own little um, little ways. If you want to talk about the difference between Viewfind and Aspen, we are happy to do that for hours and hours. So we encourage you to stop by. One of the biggest things, privileges we've had is as we start working with libraries, implementing these, we hear what you need and what you want. We go, ooh, that's a very good idea. Let's do that. So this partnership and this emergence of open and, and evolution of open source discovery layers have been a lot of fun for that very reason. The very reason we love Evergreen. It evolves because of what you want and what we do together. Thank you for my time. I will... Pass the microphone to, to Ruth and dump my slide. Have to 
you hold on to it? You do. I think maybe you should do it. There's a couple. Okay, I'm going to spend time trying to make it work too in front of everybody. <laughs> So I set a timer for 10 minutes because I have two slots, two different topics and two different organizations that I'm representing. Do not have any slides because the time I meant to, to make them was filled with something else. So uh, I'm gonna start out by uh, talking to you about uh, Evergreen Indiana's search for a discovery layer and, and this, um, came out of a migration from our largest library system, which was Porter County Library. They are, I don't remember how they fall in the ranking of library systems in Indiana. I wanna say fourth, but I think it's actually sixth. But they're big and it was complex. And they also decided on the front of, of the migration to um, also apply a discovery layer, Aspen which was great. Uh, they thought it would be helpful to apply that right before they went into an ILS migration. So they connected to the one ILS. And then uh, for patrons, the idea was that it would be a seamless transition, that they would have Aspen and then it wouldn't see the back end uh, ILS switch. It was way less seamless than, than they were anticipating, but it was also a really cool opportunity for us to uh, be part of that process and to learn about that, see what they were excited about with the discovery layer, and also really got me thinking as the leader of this consortium, the leader, the, the coordinator, who, who sometimes leads through policies developed by other people, um, what it means to be a group of libraries offering modern library service to our communities and what we need to do to actually develop ourselves to be attractive, attractive to other library systems and to continue providing more and more mature services for our existing members. And one of those things is user experience. And we can talk about the native OPAC all day long. And that's a different discussion I, it, it is, that's a different discussion, moving on. But we don't have to necessarily redevelop things. We don't have to put a lot of work in there when there's this nice, beautifully packaged piece of software that we can attach to the Evergreen databases. And we can then also bring in other things like our OverDrive collections and our Hoopla collections and, and database collections. And so we began this, um, this investigation is the best way to put it, looking at things that we knew we couldn't afford and looking at things that we probably thought didn't have the features. We are not at the end of that, but we are nearing the point where uh, we will be approaching our executive uh, governance body to make a suggestion to expend some funds. And I know that there are some discovery layer vendors out there like, what are you gonna say? I'm gonna say nothing, <laughs> not even one thing. Um, but I am very excited about the opportunity to uh, develop Evergreen Indiana in this way to give some more ownership over that catalog too for our libraries. Um, and to kind of prove that we are paying attention to what librarianship is looking like now and um, how libraries of all sizes can actually participate in this consortium. I don't, my phone goes to sleep. No, I don't actually. Oh, it is. I'm right on time. Lovely. Okay. So now I'm going to switch gears from uh, this investigation, and I'm going to go into ECDI, which is the Evergreen Community Development Initiative. Evergreen Indiana is a member of it, and I am the coordinator of it. It's weird, but talk to me about it sometime. It's a very good way to pool resources, and we do some really amazing work that I'm proud of. But one of the things that we are working on right now is another investigation toward the development of some 
APIs and administrative tools for APIs um, in the Evergreen ILS. Because as all of you know, there are a bunch of super cool third party uh, services that your librarians are going to conferences and they're getting pitched on these products. You might be the librarian that got pitched on the product in this room right now. And there is no denying it, it will improve the life of librarians in your consortium. But so far, it doesn't really improve the life of system administrators in terms of uh, data extracts, scheduling those things. Um, how many clown jobs can you possibly schedule? I don't, I think it is a finite number. <laughs> okay. Then I was going to go into another tangent on APIs and hitting the servers, but that's a different thing. We need better connections and we need better control over those connections to these third party vendors. And so we are actively working in the community to promote the idea of the development of APIs and to pay for the development of APIs. So um, some of you who know though that kind of lingo i can't explain it i'm not the person that has the technical know-how pick anybody other than me and say what the heck is an api i think of an api as a lego so that's as far as i can go in my explanation <laughs> or a straw that you kind of like piece together and yeah. anyway but it is a super important thing. I know that Mark is gonna be up here um, from Bywater, but I think you were originally like Aspen, like OG on your own, right? Okay. And he's gonna be talking about uh, APIs and connecting and all sorts of things. So I encourage you to keep your ears kind of peaked for people talking about that and know that it means that those services, things like patron point, why is that always the first one that comes to mind? Uh, unique management already has a little in, but it's cool. Um, discovery layers, all of these things connecting in would benefit from a dedicated set of APIs for the Evergreen software. And I have two and a half minutes left. So if anybody wants to ask a question other than what an API is, I'm down for it. And don't ask me either about what um, discovery layer we are leaning towards. I'll just look at you and smile. Andrea. <laughs> I gotta tell you, so after, after our, this is completely off topic. It, it does answer your question though, sort of. After our presentation, we went to lunch and lunch did not go as expected. And so switching back into thinking about what's actually in a 311, I'd have to think real hard. I don't know the features any. It is never gonna be parts. I know that I said I was enthusiastic about that development and, and I am, but it's what? It's magical, yeah, but I don't, I don't like it. I'm just glad it's gonna work. I want, I want an API and I want a discovery layer and that's all I care about anymore. Oh, and I, but the other thing I did want to talk about is one thing we did do is we just did a consortial rollout of library IQ, uh, and meaning that we worked with Molly who's out in the hall and um, her colleagues and I don't think she knew what she was getting into when we said that we were going to do that. And then she said collection codes. And I was like, you mean shelving locations? And then she realized we had 10,000 of them and mapping all of those. But it has been a hugely successful thing in Evergreen, Indiana. And it has alleviated one of those pain points for uh, people who don't have a really good understanding of how to work with the reporter um, to get some snapshot views and to really actually know that there's data in there that's meaningful for them. Uh, it does not replace the reporter, but it is a really great tool. So if you get an opportunity to look at that or other data analytics platforms, please also check that. Also APIs would make that amazing. Okay, bye.
All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Noble from Bywater. Um, I'm the Aspen architect. I've been doing Aspen and stuff for 14-ish years now. Um, so long time. I would tell you everything that Aspen does, but we give an Aspen updates in an instant every month that goes over all the new features. That takes more than five minutes, so there's no way I can cover everything. My lightning talk has morphed about 10 times since I submitted it, so if you have a specific lightning talk you want me to give, come see me at the, the table and I will give you that one. I'll give this one that it is. So my definition of API, since we were asked, is it's kind of like, you know, on Google Translate where you can like take a picture of the phone or, or take a picture of, of a screen and figure it out and it can convert your Spanish or French into English. It's a way for two computers to talk. So um, that's my opinion right now on it. So it can be a Lego too. <laughs> um, so we use um, Porter County was our first um, evergreen Im implementation with Aspen. It um, we learned a lot about the evergreen APIs. So we use APIs in Aspen. Um, Aspen works with all ILSs, so we see a lot of APIs. Um, so for example, here we can just do a quick search for like Harry Potter, because that's everybody's favorite demo. And I hit search, gotta hit search. And hopefully my internet's on. Um, so anyway, we're, we're pulling information from Evergreen, from Overdrive, from Hoopla, there we go. Um, and we can bundle it all in this nice grouped work that we have. So we can see uh, we're pulling mark data from the book. We're pulling mark data for the audiobooks. Of course, it's a big consortium, Evergreen, Indiana. So we've got a whole bunch of different uh, audiobooks, a whole bunch of different books. Um, and we can see them in a way that patrons read. So it's kind of like Google Translate, but for patrons so that they can understand our data because uh, we've got to make it display nicely for them. We've got all of our Hoopla data, all of our OverDrive uh, data, um, and each vendor is kind of doing APIs differently. So we've got a lot of uh, vendors. So like OverDrive gives us something where we can pull and say, hey, what's been changed every couple of minutes um, and tell us the status of it and that kind of thing. Um, with Evergreen, we're sort of an API, I guess. We're doing markouts um, every couple of minutes to give us a list of what's changed, calling some of the SuperCAD APIs. Um, it's a cool way of doing it, but I would love to see some of the additional APIs that everybody's asking for as well to be able to do that. Um, so we're also looking at, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to look at my time. So if somebody wants to point at me when I'm over time. Um, we're also looking at different APIs in terms of um, all the other things that libraries do. So for example, events or websites. So um, here we've got some events. So if we search for like teen, we know we've got lots of teen books. We also figure out that, hey, we've got teen pizza night. Who knew that the library had teen pizza night? That's really cool. Um, and if we click into that, then we can see, oh, okay. We can add this to our events and registers. We've got all of those integrations and those are using APIs as well. So we really wanna make sure that patrons can easily find everything that the library does because the library does so much more than just books and movies and, and that kind of thing. Um, same thing with website information. So um, you can bring in your web pages. We can say, here's some newsletters. There's printing and copying services. Um, we know a lot of people are really looking at the catalog for a one-stop shop. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're tuning all of those um, searches to, uh, to be best for events or for website searches, that kind of thing. So. Um, we also pull in open archives. So, and with those events, we're looking at like uh, Spring Share, Library Market, uh, just com Communico. Um, we keep adding new things every month. Um, so those can all come in. Those all come in through APIs. Um, they're all a little bit different. So there's a little bit of tweaking. We've got a nice team that's helping build all of this stuff in. Uh, We've got open archive stuff that we're pulling, again, a different type of 
API, so XML feed that we're bringing things in. So here we did a search for petroglyphs um, so we can find all of the books that in this case, you went to county um, has. And we can say, oh yeah, they also have a bunch of archive results. Let's take a look at those. Who knew that the library had a big archive collection? Um, their patrons can find it now, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, we, uh, how am I doing on my time? I'm probably done. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so great way for people to find all kinds of, of great things, um, understand what all the library does. Um, same thing with um, patron integration. So we've been able to say, hey, Evergreen does all kinds of unique and interesting things um, that we wanna make sure that we take full advantage of. So for example, when you place a hold, we need to know how does this uh, patron want to get notified of their hold? So do they want that email? Do they want the phone number? We let them do all of that. So there's a lot of adapting um, to the ILS and, and figuring out how to make it work the best way possible. I have some amount of time left. Does anybody have any questions or feel free to see me in the back? Hi, I'm Erica Reynolds. I'm from BiblioCommon. I got so excited when I saw this. I'm like, <clears throat> yay, I totally want to talk about discovery layers. And one time Mark actually said, we should do a presentation together with us versus all the ILS discovery layers. It'll be a cage match. So I'm still waiting. I thought this was going to be our moment. Um, but I did realize as I'm pulling this up, you know, it is true that BiblioCommon is not technically an open source discovery layer. We use lots of open source products though. We use WordPress, we use um, Tomcat, and we lose. And so I think to some extent, if you can um, humor me on this, to some extent, the idea of open source has uh, morphed a little bit over the years. And um, as a former librarian, well, I'm still a librarian, right? You don't ever like lose your librarian credentials. But um, I've certainly implemented a lot of open source systems. I've advocated for those open source systems. But I think sometimes you, um, I would also argue sometimes it's good to work with a company that's implementing open source systems to make a better world for public libraries overall. So um, I just wanted to talk about BiblioCommons as this catalog that staff and patrons really seriously love. And I'll go to my slideshow. My husband is actually a PhD in speech and he says that I talk like my hair's on fire, so forgive me. Um, so what we do is we take the best of public libraries, you know, all the amazing things that staff and, and um, the, the world of public libraries, the serendipitous discovery, and then add that to the best of the web, the best of the web, not just sort of the best we can do um, as public libraries, because we should not give up on the best possible thing we can give public library patrons. And then making digital experiences that are worthy of public libraries. So many of our public library buildings are some of the most beautiful buildings in the city. And we want the library's website to reflect that same online experience. So what makes us different? Number one, accessibility is absolutely key to everything we do. Everyone on our uh, Biblio Commons is required to have accessibility training every year. As you know, accessibility isn't something that you ever finish, right? You continue to learn. Um, also, we live and breathe UX, and we only do the patron layer. So everybody who creates on ILSs, we love you. We don't want to create an ILS. We just want to focus on the patron experience and integrate with all the ILSs. So um, one of the reasons why, when I first um, purchased Biblio Commons from my own library, I was one of the first libraries in the States in Johnson County, um, which is suburban Kansas City, um, to go with Biblio Commons back in 2010, um, what really won me over was the kind of patron feedback we got. And what makes staff happy is happy patrons. And so I just want to share a few gushy comments. And we get this feedback every day. And this really helps us inform what we do. Because as a librarian, we all know we can't build online services for librarians that will work for patrons necessarily, right? Patrons are a different kind of person than libraries. We're all weird now, right? We're, 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 we're ruined. We can never search the way a patron searches. So we have to listen to the direct voice of the patron. So this is one comment. So we say we, that patrons love it. We don't throw that around lightly. I love the library online. I patronize the library much more and much more effectively than I ever did before. This is after they had Google comments. So go Chicago Public Library. Here's another one. I, the online catalog and my KCLS are absolutely awesome. 
easy to use, easy to understand, intuitive, and very advanced. I give the online experience an 11 out of 10. King County. I love you. You make it so easy to use the library. So this is what I do when I have a really bad day. I just go read patron feedback for an hour and I feel better. I love the new library website design. And as we all know, patrons think the catalog is the website, right? So um, great design, great website. I've fallen in love with the library all over again. And I think this one is really important because this is what we're trying to do. We're not just trying to tra create a transactional online experience. You know, the idea that you can actually find the books you're looking for, that's like so 1999. Like you actually need to like find what you weren't looking for, right? Discover things you didn't even know you wanted. So this is my favorite quotes from Seattle Public Library patron. I freaking love this site and how easy it is to use. I was not a library user, though I had a card for years, right? We all know those patrons are out there. How do we engage them? Now I've borrowed and read some 68 books in the last couple of months, I'm reading again. Like we've changed that person's life, right? They can find something else to read. So uh, we work with hundreds of public libraries across the US and Canada, um, many of the most amazing, and we're super lucky to work with all these partner libraries because they really inform what we do as well. Um, and then the libraries that use Biblio Commons with Evergreen, I've listed those, and I'm super excited to be able to present with BJ this afternoon with, from King County. Um, but if you have any questions about Biblio Commons, um, I know that it is not cheap. It's not. So, um, but I also know the patron experience is worth paying for. So thank you very much for indulging me. Oh, I do wanna say though, even if you don't use Biblio Commons, we wanna make all public libraries better, 100%. This is all we do, right, is public libraries. So we do have free webinars all the time, um, just in terms, because all public libraries need support. So we have an upcoming uh, webinar on successfully managing collection challenges. Um, and this is something that is something that everyone needs to do, how you can support your staff, get your board prepared, basically just be calm and confident. And this is another free webinar we offer. So I have a whole bunch of these in my little bag if you wanna grab one. Um, and we often do these. So again, even if you don't use Bill Commons, we love public libraries. We wanna support you no matter what. So thanks. Oh, do you guys have questions? I think I have a little time. Questions, no? Okay, woo. -hoo. Hello, um, my name is Melissa McCumber and I'm from um, Skagit County in Washington State. And um, I didn't, I don't have slides or anything, but um, I was thinking, I was actually talking with Chris Sharp this morning and we were talking about migration and how people usually talk about their bad experiences. And, um, and I said, well, a good experience would be a boring talk. But, um, but then I was like, oh, it would be perfect for a lightning talk though, because it's super fast. So our library is one of the crazy ones that tried to do a migration and add Aspen discovery layer at the same time. Um, and we uh, merged in a new library. We're very small. We're, so we're in Washington State, but we're smaller than King County by far. And we're a little bigger than Homer though. So <laughs> we're in the middle. But um, so we have three libraries in our Evergreen um, sort of consortium. Um, we share Evergreen and we decided to add a new library. And then we're like, well, we'll add a discovery layer too um, while we're at it. So we can have a good user experience. And our primary reasons were the um, API integrations. Um, having the overdrive records come in automatically was huge um, for us. And then the customizations. So as we looked at Aspen, there were so many things we could customize and fit for our size of library. Um, and, but then we were surprised because we got Aspen and now we can integrate our library calendar, which was amazing. Um, so that was a big deal. Placards are really fun to play with. Um, and uh, materials requests has been really smooth and being able to add that to our system. So um, yeah, and then our migration went really well. We, we started our migration, well, we had to get all the libraries to agree to it. So that took probably the longest was getting the signatures from all the directors and the mayors. Um, and then, but we started our uh, migration in September and we were done by December 5th, we launched um, Evergreen. So on uh, the new system, and there was three things that really made it happen was partners, reach out to people who've done it already. Um, and then we use Equinox for our hosting. So they just mapped it out. So that was great. And then we, um, we had staff that overlapped. So we had some staff from a library that was currently on Evergreen that is in the neighboring city and they helped do the transition. So that really helped with training and things like that. 
And then we had really supportive leadership. Our, the director at our library that was migrating, we'd come up with these minor problems and she was like, oh yeah, that works. We'll just delete those or whatever. Like she was so laid back. So I know not everybody has those things, but the more you can um, prep for those things, if you ever bring someone in, those really, really helped us. So um, yeah. And so if you wanna see our website, um, I can tell you where it's at and we're, um, and I answer any questions. So there you go. Perhaps I should not uh, change uh, to my slides. Okay. Okay, so yes, this is actually related to uh, Evergreen and uh, third party uh, APIs. So, um, Prior to the Evergreen uh, Conference, uh, there was uh, a discussion among several of uh, my uh, colleagues uh, at uh, Equinox uh, concerning some of uh, the problems of uh, middle age. Now, of course, in humans, uh, middle age uh, can uh, include uh, random aches and pains, uh, wondering why joints, and that's just the question, why joints? Um, but Middle age uh, can also apply to software pro uh, projects, and Evergreen is an example of a middle age uh, project. And as a consequence, Evergreen does, uh, in fact, uh, have uh, you know a set of accumulated aches uh, and pains. But how do you address uh, uh, neck pain? A specially uh, designed uh, pillow. And what does this uh, pillow uh, do uh, for uh, your neck? It uh, puts it uh, into proper uh, alignment. So what this means uh, for uh, Evergreen as a middle-aged uh, software uh, you know, project is the alignment I'm speaking of refers uh, to the community. So these aches and pains, um, the accessibility uh, issues, uh, the minor glitches, the uh, JavaScript uh, framework uh, treadmill uh, we've uh, been operating on, we can then choose. Uh, we can make use of uh, those as um, yeah, as inspiration. So, what happens if uh, we try uh, aligning ourselves into a fresh uh, perspective? If uh, we embrace uh, the pains and report them, and decide not to suffer in silence to recognize that, okay, if there has been an issue since 2012, bring it back uh, to the fore, but then also recognize uh, the benefits of uh, middle age. Um, and that means knowing that we come into this with experience. We know how to actually solve uh, our problems. And after the long, long winter of uh, the first uh, phase of uh, the pandemic, we have an opportunity to come back uh, together uh, to work uh, on the project and to improve Evergreen, but also to keep in mind that Evergreen as a locus is not just us touching Evergreen, the software, but that we are bringing uh, together third-party uh, expertise. So these are strange, uh, strange people who have uh, joined us uh, today um, from other products, from other companies, uh, from other open source uh, projects, they, they are also sources of uh, wisdom uh, for us as Evergreen uh, community members. And I encourage uh, you all uh, to be welcoming uh, and to um, steal all of their uh, good ideas. And so with that, uh, if uh, we adopt this uh, new uh, perspective uh, and consider the lesson of uh, the pillow for the Evergreen project, um, we can make improvements, we can smooth over our pains uh, and earn uh, some uh, rest. Mm -hmm.